name is Brett Grassi. I'm the manager of cephalopod operations here at the Marine Biological Laboratory. And I've got the unique job of getting to manage a cephalopod culture program where we raise cephalopods from egg to adult uh, and breed them and culture them in order to support science and biological discovery. So what is a cephalopod, you may ask? Well, cephalopods are a unique group of animals that encompass octopuses, cuttlefish, squids, and nautiluses. Cephalopods are an amazing group of animals for a wide variety of reasons, which makes them particularly interesting for science and research. So what makes cephalopods so amazing? Well, uh, what they're probably best known for is their ability to change the color and texture of their skin, unlike any other animal on the planet. They can do so with unmatched speed and complexity. There's no chameleon, fish, or any other organism that even comes close with, to cephalopods with this ability. So this flashy, color-changing, beautiful, kind of charismatic behavior gets them a lot of attention, um, but they're also really beneficial for science in a lot of other ways. One other interesting aspect about cephalopods is that they're able to entirely regenerate arms and limbs. So our octopus friend over here to the right, if he were out on the reef and maybe gets one of his arms taken by a hungry eel, they're able to completely regrow that arm and all the complex suckers that, and coordination that go into that arm's movement and behavior as well. So cephalopods as a group also possess the largest eye to body size ratio out of any animal on the planet. They've got the biggest uh, brain to body size ratio out of any invertebrate. They're also the fastest aquatic invertebrate. Um, they've got very large, interesting genomes, uh, which are just now being rapidly developed here at the MBL and with collaborators. Uh, now, octopuses here don't have any bones in their body. The only hard object that they have is a, is a hard chitinous beak and some cranial cartilage. So um, there's really nothing restricting that octopus from fitting into tiny holes. And they use this to avoid predators naturally in the wild. Um, but for scientific as, uh, application, uh, it's very interesting. We can study these types of abilities in order to better inform advancements in soft robotics and things of this nature. So they're very soft, very strong uh, muscular body is, is another interesting aspect for science. The last common ancestor that we share with cephalopods was about five or six hundred million years ago and resembled some sort of small flattened worm. Now since then there's been a massive division between organisms here on planet Earth. Uh, the vertebrates gave rise to uh, dinosaurs, to the mammoths, and to us humans, whereas invertebrates gave rise to things like anemones and bugs and corals and, and uh, cephalopods of course. Uh, one unique feature about cephalopods is that they uh, adapted a complex behavior very similar to uh, advanced vertebrates where um, they show a level of sophistication that's uh, really not seen throughout the rest of the invertebrate class. They also possess a camera-like eye like we do. They've got a lens that focuses an image onto a retina. Um, they've got la very large centralized brains like vertebrates do. Um, they also have you know, closed circulatory systems, so to speak of. Uh, they just have some similar characteristics that um, show kind of an alternate path towards these complex behaviors and, and anatomical features that we don't see with many other invertebrates. Um, all of these characteristics are exceedingly interesting to scientists and to the research community, uh, but going out and finding these cephalopods out in the, the wild, out in the field, can be particularly challenging. Not only are they hard to find because of that camouflage capability, because of their ability to change the color and texture of their skin, but actually capturing them uh, successfully and transporting them to a lab or, or an aquarium uh, in order to observe them a little bit more in detail has proven very, very difficult over the course of uh, the past century or, and longer. And so here at the Marine Biological Laboratory, we're very excited and pleased to be able to produce uh, a large number of offspring and eggs and embryos uh, for the larger scientific community in a way that hasn't been very capable before. So uh, here at the Marine Biological Laboratory, we are raising a wide variety of different species, including uh, the California two-spot octopus, like you see here to my right. We're raising uh, pygmy zebra octopus from Nicaragua. We are raising bobtail squids uh, from both Okinawa and Hawaii. We're raising pajama squids, which are native to Australia. We're raising stumpy spine cuttlefish, known as sepia bandensis from Indonesia. And we're also raising the flamboyant cuttlefish native to Northern Australia. 
Uh, so as you can imagine, caring for all of these different species and all of their different life stages is no small feat. We have a very dedicated team of staff and interns who work around the clock seven days a week to provide the best possible care for these animals while they're, while they're with us. So why are cephalopods difficult to care for in laboratories? Well, cephalopods in general have very short lifespans. They have that kind of live fast, die young lifestyle. Uh, cephalopods have anywhere from a four month lifespan up to uh, five years, but in general, they're very, very short lived animals. In particular, the animals that we culture here at the Marine Biological Laboratory have uh, a little bit shorter lifespan than normal because uh, that allows our scientists to have a more rapid end sample. So our cephalopods here that we culture naturally only live about four to six months, although we can extend that a little bit longer in laboratory because they have things like uh, free meals every day, free health care, room service, and this sort of thing. They have it pretty good here. So what else makes cephalopods very difficult to care for? Well, uh, that they grow very rapidly. Even at a small size, they uh, have uh, a very rapid growth rate and, and it requires a lot of food and a lot of care in order to uh, support that growth. Um, that high metabolism, that high growth also produces a lot of excrement and waste, so water quality uh, concerns can arise. Uh, so we have uh, very high-tech uh, high water quality monitoring equipment in order to provide for the best environment for these animals as we, as we physically can. Um, some of these cephalopods, in particular some of the highly mobile squids and our octopuses have an affinity for escaping their enclosures. So we need to make sure we have very tight-fitting lids and other sort of uh, strategies in order to keep our, our animals inside their enclosures and keep them uh, as healthy and happy as they can be while they're under our care. Um, so some of these species that we're working with have never been cultured before. So that leaves some very exciting opportunities for, uh, for us and our team in order to advance these prototypes and system designs in order to best care for these, these animals uh, and kind of set the standard for the research community to, to really care for these animals in the best possible way. Uh, so enough talking about these animals. I'd like to take you guys down to the lab and go take a look at, at the various species that we have. So come on and follow me and let's take a look. All right, we are heading down the hall here where the bulk of our cephalopod cultures are in the mariculture room. Uh, so we're going to go in here and show you guys a few of our species and a few of our tanks. So uh, really quickly here, here's some, some larger photos of, of uh, the species that we'll be seeing here in just a moment. And uh, you never can be too careful, so just beware of the octopus. All right, come on in. All right, as you can see here, this is a working space. There is a lot going on down here in the mariculture room. Uh, the bulk of what you see here is, uh, is geared towards caring for and breeding cephalopods. Uh, we can kind of do a quick walk around here and I'll showcase some of the various species and the various life stages that we have uh, here at the Marine Biological Laboratory. All right, so we've got a number of different enclosures here for different life stages of our octopuses, cuttlefish, and squid. Um, you can see on the various systems here, uh, all these PVC enclosures actually each have an individual octopus in it. Uh, same with all these different tanks. They have uh, adult pygmy zebra octopus, and these are juvenile pygmy zebra octopus over here. Uh, we've got some much, much smaller baby pygmy octopus uh, in these enclosures here. Uh, we also have a large, we keep our larger squids, which are still quite small, uh, down here in these tanks. You can see one uh, back here sort of eating. You can see them right on the top side of that rock eating a shrimp over there. Uh, we have our, a number of our other species all uh, living down here in these various enclosures. Um, we also uh, incubate and culture our own eggs here. So we'll go over here to this enclosure and we can see some of those stumpy spine cuttlefish eggs that we saw earlier. I'm gonna shine a light because they're kind of dark here, but you can see those uh, beautifully laid um, cuttlefish eggs where each of those orbs actually has an individual cuttlefish embryo that's uh, growing and growing until they finally hatch. Um, our species here usually take about uh, three weeks of an incubation period before they emerge as perfect miniaturized replicas of their adults ready to start the first chapter of their life. Uh, so it's exciting here. We've got all sorts of different life stages from adult uh, to egg the hatchling uh, that keeps us on our toes and keeps us always raising them for, for uh, the scientific community. Uh, in general here, um, there's a lot of uh, teamwork and a lot of communication that needs to take place. So we have a lot of different sorts of devices to help with that. 
Um, as you can see here, on the, here's a, one of our feeding boards that communicates exactly what species are in each tank. And it also communicates how many times a day they're being fed, whether the maintenance was done that day. Um, and that way we can be highly flexible. We can change out enclosures, we can move animals, we can upgrade them to larger enclosures and effectively communicate that with the larger uh, team of animal care specialists. So uh, we have these sort of whiteboards on all of our systems. Um, we've got state-of-the-art monitoring equipment to keep our animals ha happy and healthy uh, throughout their whole natural lifespan in order to uh, breed them and culture them to support scientific, scientific discovery and future research. So that's about all we've got going on in here. Just wanted to kind of take you on a quick tour.